The Social Dilemma, ranked number one this week in Netflix's offerings. It's a tremendous documentary talking about is Google taking over the world? Is social media inherently bad? And how come there are no good barbers in Silicon Valley? Um, guys, come on, John, let's not start it this way. I got this haircut, look at me, I can't judge. Anyway, it's a fantastic documentary. Everybody should take the time to watch it. In fact, this, the rest of this YouTube video is not gonna make any sense unless you've seen it. So pause this, go over there and watch it, come back, and this will be much, much more enjoyable. Trust me, it's a documentary by a guy named Tristan Harris, which he's from the Bay Area, so of course his name is Tristan. If he lives anywhere else in the country, his name is Tristan, but in this case, I suppose uh, we're gonna give him Tristan for some reason. It looks like a guy that vacations in New York City and gets his nightclub recommendations from this guy. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, it's it basically, <laughs> the whole documentary is just talking about social media and how they're vying for our attention. And any social media with the best algorithm, with the best model, is gonna keep our attention the most. And it's very, very interesting. If you weren't aware of this phenomenon, definitely go check it out because listen, a lot of social medias have figured this out and lots haven't. I spend, I probably say I spend the most of my time on Instagram followed by TikTok, probably followed by Facebook. And that develops over time. A lot of these social media algorithms have figured out how to keep you on their platforms and a lot of them haven't. Think about MySpace came and went. Vine came and went. Google Plus never really totally came. But anyway, that's not the point. It's a <laughs> that's stupid. It's a great documentary. There's a lot of powerful and influential figures on the documentary. Tim Kendall from Facebook is on there. Roger McNamee is on there. Whoopi Goldberg is on Oh, come on. I'm saying, listen, the pandemic has been tough on people. We get it. It's <laughs> it talks a lot about how there's fake news and misinformation being perpetuated on social media apps because they're not really concerned about the truth, which is true. They're concerned about keeping you on, on the apps. And one such uh, conspiracy I heard was this. Okay, listen, I, <laughs> I've been on social media for a long time and consider myself fairly uh, versed, in, and that's one I've never heard. And if that's true, then coronavirus definitely doesn't exist because I've been in that Panda Express twice a week for the last three months is all I'm saying. Um, in all seriousness, it, it, at the end of the day, social media is very powerful. We spend a lot of time on there and, and they are interested in getting us on those apps. But at the end of the day, who is responsibility? Is it Facebook? Is it social media's responsibility? Or is it our responsibility? And that's always what I come back to. Their, social media is doing the exact same thing as a tabloid in the grocery store checkout aisle, right? They're, I don't think they're specifically interested in news. They're interested in sensationalism. They're interested in making money. Us Weekly is into making money. That's, what they're, that's a business. That's what their, their goal should be, all right? They're not worried about who they hurt or what's true or not. They're worried about you picking that thing up, buying it and taking it home. And that's the same with social media. Now we've developed some discernment with like, those magazines in the grocery store. I was like, that's not true, that's made up. And now we know that and don't trust them. And I think the same thing will eventually happen with social media. That's why this documentary is fantastic to watch because you should certainly at least educate yourself. And it, it, People get so frustrated with social media. Like, look at Donald Trump, right? He tweets things that half of the country just d d deems to be wild or inaccurate, or I can't believe he's saying that. Now, is it Twitter's responsibility to delete his account, or is it our responsibility to put that in context? We say we hate it, but we're the ones feeding it. Think about this. If everyone unfollowed Donald Trump tomorrow, none of those tweets would exist. Isn't that crazy? So you look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, maybe I'm the one, maybe I'm the one that's in charge of keeping this whole cycle, this whole engine moving. And I think that's the point of this documentary is everyone should educate themselves. There was a very brilliant part in it 
We're just talking about the brain and your dopamine receptors and how that's bad for you when you're on social media. And they were kind of explaining the background of it. And stuff. I wasn't really paying attention. I was on Instagram for most of it. But it's very interesting, I'm saying, if you go back and watch it. And there was a very interesting part that they talked about. This is the first time ever that any business has dealt in human futures. They're trying to predict human behavior and create their models around that and that's what makes these social media platforms develop it was crazy it was a, it was by a woman named Shoshana Zuboff there was a, she was only on the documentary literally for a second i think she had to get going to uh harvest uh dalmatians for skin for her jackets but come on listen that joke was right there are you you you, you cannot tell me you didn't watch a documentary and think the same thing and listen documentaries they are what they are okay we love watching documentaries that present only one side of an argument based on facts that are loosely true and with and not even necessarily close to reality to, at all i'm just saying but they they say to consider the other side they, they make a point about if you're a democrat make sure you get republicans in your feed if you're black make sure you get white people in your feed you get different opinions in your feeds and in your timeline because these social media apps want to keep you on there so they're giving you information that's only relevant to you and i think we should take that advice and apply it to this documentary basically it's very sensationalized they say that in five years everyone's going to die of committing suicide because of social media and democracy is going to crumble and the world is going to explode and that is a little uh, let's say that's a little extreme, I want to say, because everyone is fighting for your attention. They're like, we've never seen this before in human history. Oh, really? We've never seen the media fighting for our attention? Yeah, I can't imagine any scenario where the media would compete for our attention. Literally, in my lifetime, I can't imagine ever enjoying media without being competed on... This has been going on for a long, a long time. And listen, it, 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 the public eventually figures out what they want. HGTV has not served me. I don't like any of the programs on there, so I don't watch it. It's, and that's why social media is, I checked into a hotel the other day, never turned on the TV once. I showered and was on my social media. And that's, I think that's just the future of where the world is headed. And that's fine. All right, look at ESPN. Over time, they've given you the same political message over and over and over again, and no one wants to hear it. We're all, we like to watch the games live, but all the opinions on ESPN are all the same stuff, and they, they are lying. And we're like, all right, yeah, I'm good. And people are cutting the cord to cable television by the hundreds of thousands. And that's going to be the same thing. That, honestly, Twitter has experienced a lot of the same. There's so much negativity and hate and, and all that vitriol on Twitter that people go, yeah, um, I'm good. This doesn't serve me like it used to. And Twitter hasn't been able to get a handle on the outrage that happens over there. And people have kind of moved on. And that's fine. As long as we know what's happening and that's why i think this documentary is fantastic because listen everyone knows everyone knows that social media can be uh hurtful and can be destructive but it's like it's like concussions in football you know we didn't know that football and tackling cause concussions but now we know all right now we're educated so if you want to play football now with the knowledge that's fine. It, as long as you know, it's going to be, it could be destructive for you, but as long as you're aware. It's like being a Cleveland Browns football fan. Listen, you can be a fan as long as you know they're going to make terrible draft picks and never be good. As long as you know, is what I'm saying. And they did give, <laughs> they did give some good practical advice at the end of this documentary, talking about you should turn off the notifications for all your social media apps immediately that should just be a thing that everyone does because it takes you out of reality and takes you back into the apps which is a little ironic because in the very beginning tristan or tristan whatever you want to call him he was prepping for the interview and if you watch this clip he pulls out his phone and checks it and then and then he spends the rest of the documentary telling us why we shouldn't do it which is a little insane and i think the 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 responsibility falls on both parties here it falls on us 
to educate ourselves and be responsible. If you don't want your kids having social media, great. If you want to limit your time on social media, that's great. And, in, and Instagram has that. I know for a fact that it has options where you can set time limits. You can get notifications when you're uh, past your time and you can set these. So social media has done their part a little bit. They could do more, but we could also do more. Think about cigarettes. If you're going to buy a pack of cigarettes, you have to read the warning label. If you're going to drink alcohol, you have to read the warning label. If you're going to date a social media influencer, you go, oh, what's that? There is no warning labels? Yeah, there should be. There's a lot of red flags, which I didn't find till later, but it would be nice if they would. <laughs> I'm kidding. I take it back. I don't really take it back. Um, last thing I wanted to say is they, they, they painted this gloom and doom picture and said the only two industries that refer to their customers as users are drugs and social media. Okay, let's just, let's back it up a little bit. Listen, you will kill somebody to get to cocaine, to get to heroin. I've, I was on a, a cruise ship one time and the internet went out, like the internet went out on the whole boat and everybody's like, dude, this is crazy. But then like 20 minutes later, we're like, nah, nah, we're fine. I don't think anyone's ever snuck behind the dumpster at a 7-Eleven to ask for some guy named Daryl to get the Wi-Fi password. Like I, I understand that social media could be a bit uh, addicting, but let's not put it in the light of drug usage. Because listen, people kill for drugs. No one ever died for social media. Okay, all right, well, no, that's one. No one else ever died for, okay, man. <laughs> Maybe there's been a couple people, but listen, it's it's funny that at the end of the documentary, everything wrapped up and they concluded and it was all great and we learned how social media couldn't be destructive and the warnings and everything. And then it said, right at the end of the credits, it said, follow us on social media. Just kidding, let's have an honest conversation. Hey, the social dilemma. Um, where exactly are we supposed to have this honest conversation? In the message boards on your website in an op-ed piece on the newspaper. I wish there was some kind of platform that we could all get together and discuss how we feel about this documentary. Oh, social media, the thing that you've been decrying for the last hour and a half, which is unique in a way. We're kind of biting the hand that feeds us because the only reason I know about this documentary and the only reason you now know about this documentary is from Social media. I was watching uh, Matt Kuchal's uh, Instagram story and he was talking about it and I, I like him and I like generally what he likes and I think he's funny and I go, I should go watch that. And that's why I'm here. So it's just funny that you can decry the social media and say, oh, by the way, that's the only reason this documentary has been successful because people shared about it on social media, which is crazy. And the craziest thing actually... I learned once I went to their website to do some more research, they actually have social media. So it's like, all right, is this whole documentary pointless? This makes no sense. And in the, in the, the most hypocritical thing I could possibly imagine, one of the quotes toward the end of the documentary, the guy says, we should turn off we should turn off all of our notifications for the same reason we don't carry around cookies in our pocket. And I thought about that. I go, oh, that makes sense. Cause, and then I got on the Social Dilemmas website and they had an announcement for cookies, meaning they're gonna track all my information on their website and use it to market me. The one thing that they literally produce this documentary to, for us to be warned about, and they are doing it to us, which is wild. I mean, I like the documentary. I think everyone should go watch it. It's very informative, and if you're gonna spend the next hour and a half scrolling your Reddit or your Twitter or your YouTube or your Facebook or whatever it is, a great hour and a half spent would be watching that documentary. I think it's fantastically done and very interesting to check out. And once you're done with it on Netflix, know what Netflix is gonna do? recommend some other shows just like they did to me to keep you on their platform. Life comes full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. One, I think I'll wrap it up with this. My main takeaway from the entire documentary is very important. This is what 
this was my main, when I walk away, I was like, this is what I'm going to change. And I think this will be very important with you too. This will help you. It, Thank you.